Welcome to everyone, this is the Sports Show podcast and today we're joined with a very special guest, Belfast Fenness son, the one and only, Michael Collin. How are you mate? All good mate, how's things? I'm alright mate. So today we'll be talking about a lot of different things. Uh, we'll go into different stuff about the Olympics, uh, we'll go to about your professional career and your upcoming fight in August. So yeah. we'll just get straight into it. What got you into boxing whenever you were younger? Um, it was pretty simple. My two older brothers, they get sent to the gym. They were fighting in school and stuff, and they get sent to the gym by my father. And being like a young kid, I always look up to my older brothers. I wanted just to be like them, and so I kind of went to the gym uh, along, followed them as along. And I was too young at the time, but um, I kept going and kept trying to train. And the coach at the time, it wasn't my father. Um, kept saying I was too young and and kicked me out of the club. So I ended up going leaving. <laughs> and going to Clonard Boxing Club, who took me in, and you know, um, I started my kind of my career there, and then the the coach in St John Bosco seen me fighting a little underage show and told my dad get him back. He needs to come back to us, and I went back to Bosco, and you know, I I stayed there, and obviously the rest is history. Yep, <clears throat> and you fought at the twenty twelve Olympics in London, and yep. you won a bronze medal. Must have been something yeah. to win at such 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 young age to go to the Olympics. Ah, uh, it was it was special, mate. Um, you know that still it is there. It's one of my greatest achievements. It was unbelievable. The first person from my family to go to the Olympic Games and the Olympic Games is massive, massive in my house. We always watched it from from a young age. And my goal always was to be Olympic champion and. For me to go at a, at a young at the young age, qualify when I was nineteen, went to Olympics, I was twenty, and you know to go over and uh, and get a medal when I was probably the youngest on the team and the least expected to get a medal, um, and I, I went and picked up the bronze. So yeah, it was it was an unbelievable feeling. Um, I was over the moon and uh, very very proud of it. Still to this day. Yeah, and obviously the Rio twenty sixteen Olympics that whole controversy. Uh, yeah. You obviously, you obviously feel that you won the fight. How, um, how frustrated were you whenever you found out that you didn't win it? I was very frustrated. I think, I think from my reaction and anybody ever watched it could could tell um how upset and how how annoyed I was at the whole situation. Um, you know, I believed I destroyed the guy, and and you know, even when I, during the fight, like I was like, you know, I made a probably lost the second round, I won the third, and won the first. And I absolutely kind of bothered him in some of them rounds. And then when I watched it back, I think I won every round. Um, I was like, what? This is crazy. So, um, yeah, I, I reacted how a normal person would react, not how many top sports people react because they're yeah. too scripted and too followed by the book. And you, know, you do a lot of media training in, in, in you know, Olympic sports and you're prepared for situations like that, but I just said fuck that, and uh, and I'm gonna say how I actually feel here. I'm not gonna follow no script. Um, I did, and the rest of the world agreed, and it just made me kind of superstar over overnight. So, yeah, it was it was it was probably the best thing that's happened to me. Um, even though it stopped me achieving a goal, which I always wanted to have, was the Olympic champion. Um. It still kind of you know, pushed me in a, you know, a better direction. Yeah. And am I right in saying that sometime last year there was an, an investigation at India? Yeah, there's been an investigation going on since, you know, since the since the games. Um and it came out last year that you no know, everything that I had said was actually true. There was corruption and you know uh, everything about me saying about A but being corrupt and cheating and all this. There was a number of bouts which, you know, there was corruption in. Um, now they can't physically prove which bouts there was, but you know, I think it's quite obvious when you when you watch you know, my fate that my fate was definitely one of them. So, um, yeah, um, I was I was proved right. Yeah, and you've already been to two Olympics. How was your overall experience like at the village and stuff? How, how did that? How was that for you? You know what, London 2012 was probably a bit one of the best sporting experiences of my life. It was unbelievable. Now, Rio, not so much because of what happened. And at the same time, the standard of the village and uh, and the kind of things in the village weren't as good as, as London. London was, was top of the range and had the best of the best of everything. Also, 
you were spending money you were used to spending <laughs> and it was quite easy so yeah it was it was uh it was a great experience and i got to meet loads of you know celebrities and even in rio i got to meet loads of celebrities and top sports people which was fantastic yeah <clears throat> and obviously you went pro then straight after did you become a professional because you've already sort of went everything as an amateur um yes i was my plan was always to go professional after the 2016 olympics um, i actually wanted to go professional after 2012 but my father told me to stay because i was still very young and they still had a lot more maturing and, and, and developing to do as a fighter and that's why i did i stayed and you know, we went to the Commonwealth Games together and he cornered me in the Commonwealth Games and you know, won gold there. And that was a great experience with, with, with my father. And obviously he was also in my corner for the Olympics. And, you know, it was probably the worst experience together, which, you know, sporting experience we have had. And, you know, I'm still happy I got to share it with him though. Yeah. And obviously it's your pro debut, making your debut in America with Conor yeah. McGregor by your side. How did that feel for you? It must have been incredible. Ah, it was it was crazy, It was crazy of Mars. It was like the whole the whole thing, the whole fight and stuff was a blur because of the whole hoopla and hype around the whole situation and, and McGregor walking you out, McGregor coming to the change room, a really small change room in fact. And there was just loads of madness going on. I didn't even get to warm up or anything. I was just like, fuck, what's going on here? Like it was crazy. So it was an unbelievable experience. I wouldn't change it for the world because that's that's what life is. It's it's the experiences we have and it makes up, you know, whoever life goes through them experiences. And for me, that was it was fantastic, crazy all the same, but still fantastic. Yeah, and obviously you went you went seven and zero then fighting back in America on St Paddy's Day. Yeah, how special was that for you and for the fans to fight on such a such a day? Yeah, listen, you know, uh, I made my debut in some parties. They have fought in some parties day three or four times now in, in, in the years. And um, it's always special. It's always special. It's an unbelievable feeling. And, you know, I, I'm welcomed like one of, one of you know, I, I welcomed like it's Ireland when I fight there on some parties day. And it's really special. Um, Madison Square Garden, they turned up and support me and, and, and the owners and people in Madison Square Garden. You know, treat me like I'm, you know, a, a VVIP kind of really top of the range, and you know, it's it's class. Yeah, and one month later, you made your debut in Belfast. How special yeah. is it for you to fight in front of your whole your whole family, your whole friends, everyone you know can turn up and support you? It's unbelievable. Um, fighting in Belfast is always a special feeling. Um, you know, the people of Belfast are real boxing people. They understand boxing. They understand struggle. They understand what fighting really means, um, which is always great to go and fight there because they appreciate good fighters. And uh, and I'm grateful that, you know, the people of Belfast, you know, always support me and always get behind me because they're really knowledgeable boxing fans. Yeah. And then you won your first title fight. You won the WBO Intercontinental featherweight title. Uh, the title yeah. fights put more pressure on you whenever you're going in the fight week and obviously the fight night. Nah, nah, nah. Probably different in world titles, but um, not even. It's not different. It's just another fight, and I think that's the way you got to look at it. Uh, I don't go in worrying about a belt. I go in worrying about winning, and and that's my only aim when I go in there. I don't care what comes from the win as long as I win. Um, that's always my, my aim is to win. I don't care what's on the lane. It doesn't really matter. Yep. <clears throat> and you've had some amazing rink walks over all, over your fights. And yeah. I think it, it's just unbelievable. Do you try and stay focused or do you just, just try and enjoy it? You know what? The start, I kind of did. I always kind of try to block out the ring walks and stuff, even though I always planned for big ring walks um, from before I even turned pro. Like I was the one, the reason why. We walked through the garden when McGregor was with me. It was because I I had said that I want I said I want to have a long walk. The the walk in in, in the theater of the garden, which I used to box in, um, is only like a, a fifteen second, twenty second walk. Really, they've now changed the ring walks from main events to come through the whole arena. So I've kind of fucking mastered that. Um, but yeah, I always tried to remain focused and stuff. But now over the last few years. You know, I've I've learned that you need to enjoy the moments and enjoy the journey, 
as much as as the destination more than the destination so in fact so i've just been enjoying it and, and, and living them and i think if you look at my last load of faiths you can see seeing me on the ring walks i'm just I'm, I'm enjoying life i'm enjoying the atmosphere i feed in the air i use it and it's it's always a special feeling i love i love coming out the grace i love you know my people singing singing the songs of of our nation and you know, it's fantastic so yeah yeah and I've, see because you're a professional fighter there's been a lot of fighters over the time boxing and ufc who's had to do some mad weight cuts has that ever been the case for you um not so much my way because I've, I've probably missed it once uh, when I was trying to get down to 122. Um, it was actually against TJ Dahini. The fight was actually moved back to 126 because it was for a WBA uh, interim world title. And then it was, he had complained, says it should be 122. He needs to make 124. And it made me struggle because I kind of started eating to get back up to 126. And I struggled to make that missed by like point two of a pound. But other than that, no, I I am professional throughout the training camp and uh, and then weight cuts. So I don't really have problems cutting weight. Big, I never really do big weight cuts. It's not for me. Yep, and we'll move on to your world title fight against Lee Wood. On the build yep. up, the it was the press conference. Everything was very entertaining. Um, yep. you, from you on from Lee Wood. Uh, what way? Sorry, not what way. Uh, it was probably the best fight that I've ever seen, <laughs> in my opinion. It was, it was unbelievable, the full full 12 rounds. Do you feel that you were winning the fight before you obviously did not get? Yeah, 100%. I, I definitely was winning. Um, the car, even the cards in, on the fight were, were much closer than what I actually had it. They had it about 8-3 to me, <laughs> if I'm honest. And I think a lot of people who were watching kind of had it weighed but for me as well but I just felt in control um, I felt like I was dominating the fight and obviously you know a mixture of events changed how things it went like the slip in the 11th getting called the knockdown momentum shifts you know energies change he was he was done before that and then he had the news leaks of life and he came out and he got the job done which you got to give him credit for but you know in there, in that fight at times, it was it was too easy. I was hitting them too easy. Um, one thing I've given credit for and, and continue to give him credit for is his toughness. You know, he showed you know a lot of grit and uh, and determination in that fight. And you know, you gotta give him credit for that. But other than that, I thought it was easy. Yep, and obviously you're coming back to Belfast now. The fight in August against yep. uh, Miguel Mariaga. What what are you expecting yep. from this fight? What are you expecting from him? It's a tough fight. Um, you know, people are going, oh, this guy's lost five times. He's only lost to world title, ch- world champions and world title challengers. Um, you know, Lomachenko is the only person who's, you know, stopped him before the 12 rounds and, and he basically quit because he couldn't, he couldn't do nothing to Loma. But everybody else he's fought has, he's given hard fights and, and they're world champions and good fighters. So I'm expecting a stern test. Um, but one, I'll just go out and you know use my skills to you know box the ears of Mariaga and uh, and you know whether I take him out or whether I go to points, it doesn't matter as long as I win. Yeah, and there's going to be some incredible fights already. Uh, already announced. Throw McKenna was announced today. His fight, some yeah. incredible fights going to be uh going to be happening. What do you expect from Throne's fight? I expect the war from Throne's fight. This type of fighter he is, and the type of fighter his opponent is too. So. Yeah, I think it's going to be entertaining. Uh, he's he's always in entertaining fights, and you know he's a lot of value for the money. Um, so yeah, definitely. Yeah, and we'll move on to Conlon Boxing now. You and Jamie have your own business set up. Yeah. What, what made you start it? Um, well, obviously we started you know just before the the fail last year, and you know, I want I just I think I'm at that stage in my career where I can start to handle things myself and do things myself. And along with my brother, who has kind of been gay in my career anyway, for most of the time. So, yeah, I think it was just the right thing to, you know, step away and start doing our own thing. And, you know, we did. Yeah. And I seen you're doing some, some work up at West Wellbeing, up at the dairy farm. Yeah. Uh, 
what people were you doing up there at obviously a suicide and prevention uh, sort of service? Yeah, I'm, I'm just helping bring awareness and helping the charity grow for you know the the help people who are suffering suffering with depression and, and mental health issues. And you know, I think it's something that it's a stigma in, in, in Belfast, uh, especially in young adults, young men. Um, they find it very hard to deal with, you know, bad mental health and, uh, and depression. And, you know, I think people like West, West Belfast Health and Wellbeing, um, they're, they're doing a fantastic job. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy to put my full support behind them. Yep. Yeah. And we'll, lastly, we'll move on to your Twitch streams. You love the, yeah. your, your in camp. Uh, yeah. And COD, does that just keep you entertained? Oh, I made the I get bored quite easy over here as you see now. Like I'm in the apartment by myself. Um, my my, th- my roommates are here at home, so um, I'd be just I throw the stream up, I go on court, and I just work away, and it just gets a day in for me. Brilliant, mate. So that's that's everything co- covered, mate. Unless there's anything else you want to say. Brilliant. No, Dora, that's fantastic. But all the best for the podcast. Thank you very much, mate. See you later. Take care, mate. Thanks. See you.